Blood money, the Cyril Carabas story, was one which elicited indignation at this travesty of justice. From so many, in so many walks of life, first the family, then the lawyers, then the patients, the doctors from the South African Medical Association, the World Medical Association, and medical associations around the world. <coughs> Politicians, businessmen, members of the South African community, and expat South Africans in other countries. <coughs> I also was horrified when reading the newspapers and followed the story of Cyril's arrest, incarceration and confinement in the Emirates. The unfairness of it all hit me like a blow to the head. I simply had to write this book. With Dr. Survey, who's a leading South African businessman and a former student of Prof. Carabas at UCT, who really emerged as the knight in shining armor. He used his connections uh, to the Abu Dhabi royal family, made a number of trips to the Emirates on Prof. Carabas' behalf, and in the end, as you can see before you, his uh, efforts proved successful. So my journey with Cyril, of course, began as a student. Uh, he was a professor at Red Cross uh, Hospital and I studied medicine at UCT. When I got a call from Max Price, uh, the, the Vice Chancellor of UCT, Max said to me, look, Iqbal, uh, there's this professor that's, that's, that's in the States, uh, you might know him, in, in, in Abu Dhabi you might know him. I don't want to make it your problem, but can you help? And uh, so I said, sure, I've read about what's happened to Cyril and I think it's really quite tragic. And, and I think then I, I kind of said, okay, well, I need to, I need to, uh, to, to, to do something more. And I just happened to go to Davos and in Davos I, I, I was invited by the UAE to a private function. And the Interior Minister, the Minister of Finance, the Interior Minister was a chap called Mansuri. I think he was from Dubai, and the Minister of Finance was from Abu Dhabi. And, um, and what amazed me is, as I, 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 the first thing I said to him, look, thank you for inviting me, it's wonderful, but can I speak to you about uh, South African uh, that you have uh, detained in Abu Dhabi? He's a professor. Uh, he immediately knew what I was talking about. And, uh, immediately said to me, look, you know, it's a, it's a legal issue, uh, it's, it's covered by the, the laws of the Abu Dhabi, and we don't interfere in your country, don't interfere in our country, so <laughs> it was uh, quite a setback, and just ironically, that evening after that dinner, I went to what I normally go to in Davos, which is the Cultural Leaders Dinner, which I love, it's all about all the different cultures in the world, and there I sat right next to Max Price, who was also there in Davos. And I said to Max, you know what, I had this meeting, uh, but I didn't go to one. But I think I've got to, I've got to do something else. Um, anyway, I then uh, contacted some people that I knew, and then I got a phone call to come to Abu Dhabi. And I said, no, before I go and put my neck on the line, because I don't end up in prison myself, <laughs> got to watch what I do, I went to see uh, so. Uh, in the flat in Abu Dhabi. I needed to know for sure that he was innocent. I needed to know that. And uh, as is customary doctor to doctor, I said to him, so, so tell me what happened. Of course by then I had read the notes. Um, he told me what happened and he said, look, platelet counts were dark, I gave the transfusion. Uh, but there's no medical committee, he's not meeting. And they were, in fact, you said they had just phoned two weeks before something. And you never heard from them again. And uh, I said, Cyril, tell me, are you innocent? And he said, absolutely. And he was very nonchalant. And, uh, and, I, and I said, no, he's innocent. No question about it. And then I had the meeting arranged for dinner. And I think what was the turning point? with the royal family was the fact that um, I was a doctor and I could forcefully put across the point of view that uh, Cyril was innocent and that I thought it was 
nonsense that the medical committee uh, didn't meet. Because had the medical committee met, and had they seen the evidence that I had seen, I saw it given me a copy of it, and I got those documents, um, then they would come to the same conclusion which I would, that he was innocent. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, there was a critical moment, critical moment, what I call the negotiations over dinner, where the he person looked me straight in the eye, and said, Doctor, you do realize you are saying he's innocent. And if you're wrong, you do realize you are wrong. And I knew exactly the implication of that. For the 30 seconds or more, um, my heart fluttered a bit and I started getting a bit nervous. I said, well, what happens if I'm wrong? You know? um, because the implications could be quite big. And I said, no, I'm right. I said, I am, uh, I am confident of what I'm saying. He's innocent. And you should get your medical committee to investigate this and to report on this immediately. Because that's what a good leader does and that's what a good country does. Um, anyway, that was it and the phone calls went off and I didn't understand a word of what was being said. But uh, the medical committee did release the report and the next day and then someone went to court the day after. And uh, of course that was the first phase of his release uh, after nine months. Um, so for me it's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing honor and, and, and privilege to have, have played a small part, 1% uh, uh, in, in, in helping Cyril get back to our country, helping him to continue to do what, what he does best. I think he's a great hero. You know, not because he became, became free from Abu Dhabi, but he's a great hero because uh, you know he's he represents good karma in the world. That if you do something good and you give your life towards the public and other people, uh, uh, ultimately you get rewarded. I must also thank uh, people that got me out of jail, and I think. One of the reasons may have been, I'm not quite sure about this, but uh, I was helped by uh, the Reverend Andy Thompson, who was the uh, Anglican uh, minister in Abu Dhabi, and um, my friend, who became my friend, Elwyn Buschel, uh, subsequently offered me accommodation in his home, and he was Elwyn's uh, minister. and. Um, I believe that um, that um, uh, Andy Thompson may have contacted uh, Desmond Tutu uh, also to try and put in a word f for getting bail for me. I'm not quite sure. Now, there are many un uncertainties about this. But I was refused bail. I was in jail for two months and I was refused bail uh, on three or four occasions. And eventually on the 11th of October, um, my last court appearance from jail, uh, I was eventually granted bail and I think the two things may have been the pressure from the Reverend Andy Thompson, maybe assisted by Desmond Tutu, and also the fact that Elwyn Buschel, uh, who was a gastroenterologist uh, who'd been working in the Emirates for the last 10 or 12 years, offered me accommodation, and this was through the late Solly Marx, who was a local gastroenterologist, who knew Elwyn, and when he heard about my problem, asked Elwyn if he could do something to help me, and what he did was uh, offer me accommodation. Uh, once I got out, the court appearances continued, and on the 11th of October, when I was given bail, a medical committee was appointed to look into you know, whether I treated uh, the child correctly. Uh, and um, as far as I know, I don't believe this medical committee ever met. I don't believe there ever was a report. But it was supposed to report within 30 days um, on whether I had treated the child with acute myeloid leukemia correctly. And um, every time the court happened beyond 30 days, there was no report and no report and no report. 
and I don't actually believe there ever was a report, but uh, I've been trying to obtain this report ever since. Um, I again have to thank everybody that supported me, and I think Iqbal was possibly one of the major figures there, uh, you know, talking to the uh, leaders in the Emirates uh, who managed to get me out. Um, he came to see me, on, I remember the date, on the 17th of March uh, last year, and on the 21st of March, at the next court appearance uh, after that, I was acquitted. Supposedly, because the medical committee had found me not guilty of um, what they called um, manslaughter of the child with acute myeloid leukemia. Um, I just again want to finish off, I think, to thank everybody for their support. I don't think I really want to go on much longer. It, it really was uh, fantastic uh, to learn, you know, after coming back, uh, particularly what uh, everybody had done for me. And uh, many thanks, and uh, it's nice to be back. Thank you.